Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, this webinar around Twinfield, powerful online accounting with Twinfield. Um, we're going to obviously give it a minute or two just to let everyone jump in. I uh, appreciate that this is effectively 11 o'clock on a Monday morning uh, because uh, the majority of us in the UK, at least, had yesterday off uh, as a bank holiday um, to watch the, the, uh, the, the Queen's funeral. So uh, thank you all for attending. Great to see uh, so many people jumping in already. Um, what we're going to be uh, doing today is myself and my colleague, and we'll, we'll introduce ourselves in a minute. We're going to be walking through our powerful online accounting system, Twinfill. Now, um, we're going to try and make this session interactive. So if you have questions, feel free to dr uh, drop them into either the Q&A or the chat. Equally, um, we're going to run a couple of polls as well, trying to get a little bit more information uh, from you to help us tail, uh, tailor the webinar. Um, Mike, did you, you know, in general, while everyone's flocking in, did you have a good weekend? I had a brilliant weekend. I nearly started the call with Bonjour, Je m'appelle Mike, seeing us <laughs> in, was in Paris for the weekend, but um, that's about as far as my French got me. Um, luckily, my partner um, spent 16 years in France, so she managed to pull us through. Um, and it was the first trip with my uh, little boy, who's four months old, who was good as gold. So um, all in all, a very good weekend, yeah. Nice. Nice. That's always it's always good, right? It's always good to to, to get away with the family. Look, we're, we're we're kind of um, a few more people are still flooding in, so I'll give it another like 20, 30 seconds before we officially get going. I hope everyone's uh, well this morning, and um, yeah, looking forward to I think what is going to be a really really interesting webinar. And, and Mike's going to take you through some some kind of interesting stuff around Twinfield. So I think it's looking like we've stabilised on, on everyone coming in. So I think, Mike, should we jump to the first slide? So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Phil Hobden. I'm head of digital here at Walters Clue. I look after the, the digital team which works with um, Twinfield, Basecone, Finsit, and also the CCH One Click products. I've been with Walters Clue for about six months now, uh, and previous to that, I worked at a couple of different fintech businesses, um, but I've been working with accountants for about the last 10 years to try and kind of help you implement new technology. And I'm joined today, or in fact, Mike is going to be hosting this webinar. Uh, Mike Hibbert. Morning, Mike. Uh, thank you for the introduction and everyone for joining this morning. I can appreciate that after a bank holiday weekend, you know, sort of losing a day, everyone's got sort of stuff to catch up on. So, um, I really appreciate the time to to go through Twinfield was with us this morning. So um, I've been in the industry for about 15 years now. Um, I made the move over to Walters Clure in March uh, to specifically head up uh, Twinfield, Finsit and Basecone in the UK. Um, I was previously working at Sage for 14 years. Um, probably the biggest reason for moving over to Walters Clue was, was the products and, and the culture. And uh, the culture is probably safe for a better call, but the products themselves. Um, so my experience is, has predominantly been working with accountants, bookkeepers, SMEs, and your more corporate clients. Um, probably in the last five or six years, more moving them over on their digital journey, whether that's, you know, moving away from a more traditional desktop or moving away from a different way of working, Excel-based. Um, so, yeah, it's been more on the digital side. Um, so, yeah, it's, again, it's just great to have everyone join in this morning and uh, look forward to going through the software with everyone. And I think, Mike, it's fair to say both those photographs were taken a while ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, think we've, I think we've both aged for various reasons since then. There's, there's no question about it. I look at myself now with a four month old son and I don't recognise who's in the mirror anymore. But um, there's no doubt about it. I wouldn't change a thing, but I thought I'd better get a fresh picture yeah. uh, rather than a more recent one. <laughs> so he, that, loves, he, he loves me and my partner that much. He keeps us up every night. He can't bear to stay away from us. Can't bear to stay away from us. So look, while we uh, kind of run through um, some housekeeping bits and pieces, what I'd like to do is just run our first poll for the day. So first poll is two questions. So uh, Steph, uh, brilliant. So the first question is, how much do you know about Twinfield? So we use it. We used it before, but not anymore. We uh, know it, but have never used it. And the last option is, what's Twinfield? Uh, and then the second question, so if you could answer both, that would be fantastic. Do you use CTH accounts production and CTH practice management? We use CTH accounts production, we use practice management, we use both, we don't use either. 
So if you could um, have a go at filling in that, um, and just to give us a bit more of an idea of who we've got on the webinar, and that will enable Mike to kind of tailor, tailor some of the responses to you all. So this session will run for approximately 60 minutes. Actually, we'll probably estimate around 45 to 50 minutes, uh, depending on questions. You can ask questions any time using the Q&A panel. So if you've used Zoom before, and, and let's be honest, now kind of post-pandemic, um, I think most of us have used Zoom at least once, uh, there's a Q&A option at the bottom. But equally, uh, you can use the group chat to connect with your peers uh, and ask any questions on a more open forum. Uh, we are recording this session, which will be shared with you. Um, so uh, if you have to pop off or if you've got other colleagues within your organisation that you think might be useful uh, to view this, then absolutely they're going to be able to do this. We're also running two further webinars in October and November. So again, if you've got other people within the business that are interested in finding out a little bit more about Twinfield, um, they can jump on as well and ask some questions. So that gives you a little bit of an overview of what to expect from today's session. So just quickly while we're, uh, while we're doing that, uh, Mike, I'm just gonna have a look at the answer to uh, poll number one. So uh, percentage of people on the webinar are already using um, Twinfield, which is good. That means that they're, they're coming on to try and uh, just see how good your knowledge about Twinfield is, Mike, and, and to maximize. So, so potentially, you know, uh, some bits in there. We've got the majority of people, however, this webinar um, know it and have never used it before or don't really know Twinfield at all so that's kind of a, the majority of people on this webinar so it's good to see that actually um, we're going to be able to kind of give you all a good bit of knowledge and information about what today holds so Mike I, I think just, yeah I cool. think just going back so there the, the reason we wanted to sort of ask that question is that um with the time that I've been in the industry, Twinfield wasn't a product, in all honesty, that I was particularly familiar with. Um, but when I saw it, I was really surprised that it wasn't one that I was familiar with. Um, it's, it's a brilliant product in terms of all of your day-to-day -day accounting, your day-to-day -day bookkeeping, and um, your more maybe advanced features, you know, like your fixed assets, your group reporting, that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to, to sort of find out straight away because... Um, with Twinfield as a product, it's it's not one that's aggressively marketed. It's not one that you're going to see all over LinkedIn or hear on the radio or see on the TV. I think what's really important from a Walters Clueless point of view is that um, when a customer is coming on board with Twinfield, it's the right customer and it's the right project for you and it's the right project for us. Um, it's not really out of the box software, so it's not something that you could just buy through the website and your reporting structures are going to be in there, your chart of accounts is going to be in there. Um, so it's really about setting you up for success from the very start. And I think that's why we really wanted to, to get that question, just to understand um, what people's perception of Twinfield is at the moment. Absolutely. So, Mike, uh, why don't we hand over to you and you can talk through the, the specific agenda, maybe touch on the answers to um, question two. And I will monitor the chat and the Q&A and feed through any important nuggets. And then we'll, we'll pick up again towards the end of the webinar to see how we're all doing. Yeah, fantastic. Cheers, Phil. Um, so just to, to run through a bit of an agenda for today. So we've gone through an introduction. Um, I'm going to go through some key features of Twinfield. Um, I don't like to keep the presentations too slide heavy. I prefer just to get in the software and um, and show in a live environment. So then I'll be going through the demonstration. Um, I've got a case study um, from a recent customer that, that I've had uh, hand in onboarding. And then if we've got any questions towards the end, uh, we, can, we can open that up. The chat panel will be open as we go. So, you know, if there's anything that you want to fire in the questions as we go, no problem at all. Um, but just to start off with, the reason I wanted to go through just a slide going through some key features is that this generally answers a lot of questions um, about Twinfield as a product, whether it's sort of data security or, you know, real time when it comes to multi-users. So Twinfield can easily manage all accounting functions. Um, this is from your invoicing to management accounting, and is really sort of suitable for the smallest startup through to the sort of largest international group. Um, and it does this really through these key features that we've got on the screen. So advisors and clients can share real-time information. Uh, you'll be collaborating with confidence that the system is as up-to-date as the last transaction and invoice that was posted. Advisors can also view live financial information. So you can give a better advice on business critical conditions. 
Uh, Twinfield is also scalable software that copes with business growth, which is, I think it's really important from a usability point of view. So you can start off with the more basic bookkeeping functions, um, really safe in the knowledge that as required, you can simply start using the more advanced features like fixed assets, project accounting, intercompany postings, or you know group consolidation. Uh, it's also multi-company, multi-language, and multi-currency. So instantly have the facility to see a company's financial position in the currency of your choice, um, as well as produce international group reports in the designated reporting currency. So just to expand on that a bit more, and again, this is from experience since I've joined in March, is quite a few of the customers that we've onboarded had uh, the base currency. So they wanted the environment set up in, let's say, UK sterling, but they wanted the reporting done in, in dollars. So with Twinfield, you don't have to have the base currency and the reporting structures set up in the same currency. They can be different. Um, and you've also got just moving on to the next area, uh, you have time saving reporting drill down. So from any report to the initiating transaction, scanned image or stored invoice. So this helps the immediate responses to queries. So there's a single ledger design that eliminates the need for reconciliation and period close, giving you more time to analyze the figures instead of creating them. Uh, and then moving on to API, which is, is a big one in the industry at the minute, you've got seamless uh, API integration. So Twinfield's open API links provide secure integration with your chosen business systems, such as stock and purchase control that pull data into Twinfield. And it's also worth mentioning here that if you need um, an API link creating that we haven't specifically got at the minute, it might be more industry specific, uh, we can look at creating that link with you. Uh, and you've also got end-to-end -end accounting. So we touched on uh, CCH accounts production and practice management. So Twinfield integrates with your accounts production, practice management, and also Basecone, which I'll be touching on briefly. Um, anyone who's not familiar with Basecone, it's our very own data capture tool uh, designed ultimately to reduce manual data entry. Um, so with the integration with accounts production and your practice management, you're really getting a, a sort of true end-to-end -end accounting solution and you're going to avoid any sort of re-keying uh, when you come to produce a manual account and there's been a lot of success and a lot of new clients that have, uh, have combined the integration with the two since I've joined in March. Uh, and just a couple of last points before we go into Twinfield, you've got access to your documents within Twinfield permission settings, so this gives you full over full control over who can access documents, giving you, um, I suppose, better security over your client's information. So just touching on that point in a bit more detail, it's only natural that when it comes to a business, uh, a practice using uh, accounting software on a day-to-day -day basis, that you're going to have uh, users with various levels of knowledge. Um, so within Swimfield, you can really customize a, a role for that user's individual requirements, which is really important. Uh, and last but not least, which is a big one, is obviously uh, data security. Um, so we have first class security using data centers in Europe. So data is secured by firewalls, antivirus and data encryption software with independent security audits carried out quarterly. So, you know, giving you that little bit of added peace of mind that your data is being stored as securely as possible. So again, I just wanted to touch on that slide a little bit, uh, just to um, obviously um, just cover a key few things on the uh, functionality side. Again, I just think it's really important to touch on that, uh, and now we'll we'll get into a live environment. So. Obviously, with the poll that we did, uh, there are a few Twinfield users on the call, uh, which will be familiar with, with where we are now and look of this. Um, I, I really thought about how to present Twinfield because essentially we're only going to be scratching the surface today. Um, it wouldn't be possible to, to cover everything in sort of 45 minutes to an hour or, or half an hour. So I thought it was really important just to show a couple of things to start with that are really compelling reasons why new customers have come on board with Twinfield because um, it's something that I've had a part in. So I just thought that was really important to show. Um, and the first one, uh, is group reporting. So group reporting, you know, customers want in the facility to be able to create consolidated reports quickly, efficiently, 
Um, one of the things that was finding with the customers that I've onboarded is the existing system. It was more about having to export the individual company reports than trying to consolidate them together just from a time uh, point of view, it, it can be exhausting. So with Twinfield, you know, we've really got the facility to, to create group consolidated reports really quickly, uh, which I'll run through now. So from setting this up, it's really straightforward that when you're using Twinfield, you're going to get used to the navigation bar on the left hand side. So I've just opened this up a bit more. You can see the options that we've got. You've got your sales ledger, your purchase ledger, <coughs> excuse me, cash and banks, uh, your VAT. So as you can imagine, uh, Twinfield is fully MCD compliant. You've got your fixed asset, your financial professionals area, reports and settings. And if I just scroll down a little bit and go into my organization settings, the first thing you would do is go to company groups. And then I have previously created uh, my own company group, which is Mike H. Uh, and then you would just give it a name and a short name. Once you have done that, you would just go back into the settings area and go into company settings. And if I go into company settings, again, I just need to assign this environment or this organization that I'm in to that reporting structure that I've set up. So you can see here, I've got Mike's group reporting. And then in the top right hand corner, we've got the portfolio icon here. So if you are doing any group reporting and you are part of a group, you would have the other individual entities that you are connected to in your portfolio. And then you would simply repeat the process uh, with skipping the organization step. So you just go straight into company settings and just make sure that each organization uh, is connected to the reporting structure that you have set up. Now, it doesn't really matter where you run the report from, uh, just from a data point of view for when we're doing a little bit more input later, it's probably worth just going back into Hibbert and Co. So there's three ways uh, that we can access the report that I'm going to show. Um, for the demonstration purpose, I am going to be using the extended trial balance. So just from a navigation point of view, you can use the search bar and go to extended trial balance. Uh, alternatively, you can use your uh, financial professionals here, uh, go into the reporting area. But as I mentioned earlier about each individual users having different roles within the business, uh, if it's someone's job who is predominantly going to be doing the reporting, you might just want to save it on your favorites here. So let's have a look at the extended trial balance to start with. So now we're in the report, it's just worth highlighting what this area is. So this is the criteria area. So this is showing what is going to be on that report that we're going to produce. So in the top here, you can show entire structure, including ledger accounts or exclude them. I'm going to be reporting, uh, doing this report by group for demonstration purposes, but we do have a couple of different options. If you do it by current, this means it will run it for the organization that you're in. So we're currently in Hibbert and Co. If I choose any, this is just going to give you the chance to choose individual companies that you want to include on that report. Or alternatively, again, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to run it by group. And you can see that it's on Mike's group reporting at the moment. So from a data point of view, I'm just going to run this for 2020. I'm going to include balance sheet, P&L, uh, I've also got status. I want to include my provisional and final transactions. I'm going to round it by whole amounts and I want to show non-attached general ledger accounts. And if I just click on next, it is going to produce a essentially consolidated uh, group report for me. Now, from a consolidation point of view, you know, you might be looking at this like when I first started using the software and think this doesn't look particularly consolidated. It's got all the information I'm asking for. You can see on the left hand side, I've got company one. If I scroll down a little bit further, company two, company three, and then finally at the bottom, we've got Hibbert and Co, which is company four. But I think where Twinfield really comes into its own is, is the ability to manipulate what you can see on the screen and really produce a report, which is a bit more how you want to see it and which is a bit more how your business works. So we're currently in the extended trial balance now. And if I just go to design, I'm just going to open the screen a little bit bigger and I can design my own uh, extended trial balance by group at the moment. I can add a logo on here to make it a little bit more personalized. 
Um, I have to mention here as well, this is really important that when you do create a report, it has to have a name and a description on it. And the reason behind this is you cannot overwrite an existing report in Swinfield, uh, which is really important. Uh, there's uh, 52 reports out of the box um, and you can't overwrite them, which is again, just really important. You, the last thing you wanna do is make a mistake on a report and know that you've, you've overwrit one of the, the ones which is a standard uh, within Twinfield. So I think when it comes to running a, a group consolidated report, you're probably, for, from my opinion, doing it from the left, table from the left, and from a table view, you are probably better pivoting it by company. And what I mean by pivoting by company, I'm sure anyone who's got a bit more Excel experience will completely understand that when you're pivoting it, essentially it's going to be in a table format. Uh, so you're going to have each company running side by side, um, which from a consolidation point of view is just going to be a, a lot easier to understand. Um, and on the screen here, you can see that that report that I just produced contains all of this information, but you might want to get rid of year end adjustments or you might want to get rid of balances base currency. So the little cross icon, you can literally remove as much information as you want. Um, and if I just close this down, I suppose a little bit like Blue Peter and just go on one that I created earlier. Uh, so I've got Mike's group reporting. Uh, you will see that from a consolidation point of view, this just looks a lot cleaner. The only thing that I really wanted to see on this report was my general ledger accounts and my general ledger balances. And you can see I've got each company running side by side. And then from a, a drilling point of view, if you want to drill into any financial information and, and get it more from a transactional level, you can go to general ledger transactions and we can drill into this further. And then to export the reports, dead straightforward, go on to export and then just choose if you want it in sort of Excel or PDF format. Now that, that's the first thing I, I sort of wanted to go through and I was a little bit conscious maybe when I was thinking about this presentation that, you know, starting off with something like group reporting, is that a little bit advanced? Is that not going to be engaging for people who are going to potentially be in the meeting? But, you know, Twinfield as an online accounting solution has been around for 22 years and that's 22 years cloud-based. So as you can imagine from a day-to-day -day running point of view, it has your sales ledger, it has your purchase ledger, it's MTD compliant. So it has all of the things you need on a day-to-day -day basis, but I thought it's worth just highlighting from the very start why customers have moved over since I've been at Walters Kluwer and what my experience has been. Um, and the other, the other thing that's come up quite a lot is the, um, is the ability to do uh, prepayments. Um, and it's not really just the the ability to process a, pre a prepayment is more, again, going back to the reporting side and how you can manipulate data and use a report, which is, is going to be really handy with you at, at year end. Um, so when you um, come to do your um, schedules at year end, instead of having to manually find when them, where them invoices have been spread, you've got everything in front of you with the spread specification report, which is in Twinfield. Um, so I'm just going to go through prepayments in, in a second. And after a uh, delayed flight from Paris, um, I'm losing my voice a little bit, which is perfect timing. Um, so we'll go through uh, prepayments in Twinfield, but we're also going to go through uh, prepayments in Basecone as well, which I briefly touched on earlier. Uh, so prepayments, really straightforward. Just go into your purchase ledger. And if I go to data entry, uh, the first thing it's going to ask me to do is choose who my supplier is. So I have got an invoice uh, which I'm going to all allocate for Kingston Borough Council and it's for £18,000. Um, I'm going to give it an invoice number just to use today's date, 2022, and I will just put demo at the end. And this is really important just in the top right hand corner. You've got spread invoice. So this is where we want to spread it uh, from and where we are spreading it to. So I'm going to spread it from uh, 2022 April and I'm going to spread it all the way to uh, March 2023. Uh, and this is going to be posted to prepayments. And then I'm going to mark that as provisional. 
So it's just worth highlighting as well here from a, um, if anyone's familiar with, with other bookkeeping solutions, you know, whether you're using your, your Sages, your, your Zeros, your QuickBooks, um, as far as I'm aware, my experience, some of them have error corrections modules or recall options. And what Twinfield does, which I think makes life a lot easier, is instead of having a correct uh, transactions module, we have provisional and final. So if you're using Twinfield on a day-to-day -day basis, it's probably um, handy just to get used to marking everything as provisional. And then once it's been marked as provisional, it can be uh, someone's job then just to go into financial professionals, uh, go to transactions and mark them as final. Um, but I'm going to go through that in a second and delete this after I've gone through the uh, spread specification report. So again, when I'm running this report, this wasn't about just going through, you know, prepayments because um, there's more to it than that. It's when you've done the prepayments, what can you get from a reporting point of view? So you can actually see here, this is the, uh, the invoice that I've just, uh, just posted here. I can see it's been spread exactly how I wanted to over the 12 months. This is the standard spread specification report. But again, I've just, for demo purposes, just created a couple more uh, just to show you how the sort of consolidation looks. And again, just removing information, making it that bit cleaner and just really show the information that you want to see. What you can also do as well is we can use the minus arrow. So if you don't want to see um, by transaction on that level, if you just want to see a, a sort of balance instead um, and an amount, you can drop uh, the information on the report as well, which is really handy. And now I'm just going to go into my um, financial professional section, just delete uh, that transaction. Just I'm going to go run through the, the base cone section as well. So to go to provisional transactions, you can see I've got a purchase invoice here and I am just going to mark this as wrong data for demo purposes and delete it. So that's been deleted. So just to go back to what I was saying there, there's no recall option. It's provisional, trans and final. So to get in that habit of doing provisional, someone can always come in and check them before they're posted and, and finalized. Uh, I'm just going to go through the prepayment side in base cone as well, because Again, uh, just from my experience uh, using uh, both of these products in the last few months, um, I'd probably say uh, 70 to 80 percent of Twinfield users use base cone as well. Um, if you're doing anything with purchases, uh, these products go hand in hand. Anyone who's familiar with your auto entries, your decks, um, again, this is just my opinion. Uh, a lot of these products are, are very similar in terms of functionality. Uh, for me, uh, probably what separates uh, base cone is that because it uses true OCR, when you post a document, it goes straight into your accounting system, i.e. Twinfield, which we are using today. Um, and I think that's really important because everything is from a time point of view, you need to save as much time as possible. You don't want to be waiting for documents to take you know, a raft of time to publish into the accounting system, which then means downtime of you processing. So I think it's really important that when you're using a data capture tool, whenever you process something, you know it's going to be processed straight into the accounting system. So when we're using base code, the first thing that we need to do is mark it, uh, whether it's a purchase invoice, a sales invoice or an expense. Uh, just confirm the document. Uh, and then it's just going to ask us to uh, book this. Um, again, anyone who's familiar with other uh, manual uh, data tools like your, your DEX, your auto entries, um, you might be more familiar with publish. Uh, so this is a Dutch product. So the terminology is slightly different. So book is basically publish. Um, and you can see with the document that I've got here, it's already preset quite a little bit of information on there. I'm just going to change the invoice number again, just so I can pick it up easily uh, on the report. Um, 18,000, uh, I don't need to put a payment reference on. It's not picked up the supplier yet. So I'm just going to assign this to Kingston Borough Council. And then all I need to do from here is use deferred costs. So where am I spreading this uh, over to? And you can see I've got my from and to at the bottom there. Now, base code is really handy as well from a, a, an input point of view that generally you don't even have to type anything. You can just copy, drag information over to uh, the input side here. 
The authorization flow is really handy as well. When I mentioned about earlier about different roles within within a brick business or a practice, um, you know, with something like Baseco, and if you have someone who's maybe more junior level who does the day-to-day -day process and who's going to be doing the input side, you might want to put an authorization workflow on. So if it's an invoice, let's say that's over a thousand pound, we want that to go for another member of staff to to double check. And then if it's over, let's say ten thousand pounds, we want that to go to a third member of staff. So you can really um, you can really put your authorization workflows on there, which are really handy from a business point of view. Uh, so I am going to, uh, from a date, I'm going to put this from the 1st of April 2022 again and run this to the 31st of March 2023. And all I need to do now is book this into Twinfield. So we can see with the green message at the top there, document has successfully been booked into accounting system. If I go back into Twinfield, I'm going to uh, refresh the page. And then um, let's see if um, when I said about instant uploads worked, I think someone said about never working with live software, animals and kids. So uh, you're always running the risk with live software. So let's go to that spread specification report. If we just go on to click next, and then we've got, uh, my invoice here um, from Twinfield. And if I want to drill into it and actually go to the stored document, I can go right down to the, as I mentioned on the previous slide about the source document, there is the, uh, the purchase uh, invoice that I've just posted into Twinfield. So again, it's not necessarily about showing prepayments, it's more about the output from that. So again, just going back into the, the spread specification report, you can manipulate this as much as you want. There's a few different ones that I created. And again, if you want to drop down the information just to do it by uh, ledger rather than transactional. Um, so them two things, I hope um, people have liked to see that. Um, like I said, I was a little bit conscious about going into a couple of things that might seem a little bit um, sort of high level. Um, but Again, these were just compelling reasons and things that people have really liked and existing customers as well. I've done a lot of work with existing customers and um, found out their reasons for using Twinfield. And uh, these have been two really common ones. So I hope everyone sort of enjoyed looking at that. Um, just while I have a quick drink of water, I'm just going to bring Phil into it for a second and see if there's any questions in the chat panel. Is there anything that needs picking up? Hey Mike, uh, at the moment there are no questions in the chat or the Q&A, but just to remind everyone, if you are looking to uh, ask us a question, you can. I'm just going to put a hello in the chat, just so you know it's there. And equally, uh, you can drop something into the Q&A and ask us a question in there. Um, feel free to test Mike's knowledge around Twinfield. So uh, if you've got a question, ask. But um, at the moment, Mike, uh, Mike? Mike, dropping brand names. At the moment, Mike, we're all good. Brilliant. If there's, there's no questions so far, that's great. Like I said, I hope everyone's sort of enjoying what they're seeing at the moment. Um, probably sort of for the last uh, 10, or, 10 or 15 minutes now before we go into the case study, um, it's probably worth going through um, some of the navigation uh, stuff within Twinfield. And I mentioned this earlier about um, only scratching the surface today. Um, there's no real generic uh, demo for, for Twinfield. Um, customers use it in so many different ways um, and the output can be so different for different customers that um, it's probably really important if anyone does have any questions or, you know, with my contact details, um, please get them questions over to me because, again, today, it's only scratching the surface. Um, so from a navigation point of view, I mentioned earlier that you've got your navigation bar on the, on the left-hand side. Um, I also touched on about your favorites here, which are really easy to add. Again, it's just really important that different users will have different roles. Just make your life as easy as possible. That When you set Twinfield up, just get your favorites on there and it just makes life a little bit quicker. Uh, you've got your insights area. So anything that's unpaid, your top 10 customers. I suppose you could really call this a snapshot of, of where the business is to date. Um, and this information is drillable. So if I need to see anything that's overdue, I can go to my overdue area. You've got your paid area and anything that's to be sent. Um, it only seems like a little thing, but it's something I really like in, in the accounting system is your timeline here. 
So if you've ever got a customer who's maybe disputing ever receiving an invoice, you know, you can actually see when it was sent, when it was viewed. And if a, a reminder needs to be sent off the back of that, um, you can send a reminder. Um, and that's, um, if anyone's familiar with um, something like Citago, um, you can send chaser letters out. Uh, so they're like, essentially like a debt, debt chase letter to a customer and a reminder, um, which is the format of Citago, which is handy to have in here. And um, we'll just go back to the home page as well. Just a couple of things to touch on in the top right hand corner. Um, file manager, this is where all of your reports are going to be stored. Uh, anything that you download, you can also download any out of the box reports. Um, probably a good example is if there's anyone on the call who's got customers who sell online, whether that's eBay or, or Amazon, or if you sell online on a daily basis, you will get a sales report. Um, throughout the day at certain periods. So you could essentially export that report into uh, Twinfield or alternatively, when we touched on open integration before, if you wanted to um, take API to the next level, you could just connect it direct and then sales will automatically uh, be posted into the software. And so again, just to avoid sort of manual data entry and importing and exporting. Um, you've got the little Windows icon as well, which can be really handy just to open a separate browser page if you just need to look at anything side by side. And then you've got your portfolio, which you touched on, and if you want to search by uh, company as well. Um, a couple of things that are probably worth really mentioning. I'm going to go through the, the banking, um, uh, banking and VAT. So from a VAT point of view, obviously uh, making tax digital is massive and for, for peace of mind. Um, Twinfield is completely uh, MTD compliant. It's really hard to show the, the VAT side sometimes in a demo environment because I haven't got live HMRC credentials, but we can see that I've got a, a VAT return that needs um, essentially confirming here. I've got my nine box information. If you need to make any adjustments, just use the padlock. You can make any adjustments. I don't think it's something that HMR, as far as, as far as I'm aware, encourage, but you've got a comments and notes section just to, to sort of back up and, and put a reason for the changes that you're making. Um, and once you're happy with everything, just click on save. Um, and if I just go back to that return, then it's just about uh, authorizing this or rejecting it. And that's a true uh, online submission, as you can imagine, that will go direct to HMRC. Um, and then from an audit point of view for yourself, you can see who's created that VAT return um, and when it was uh, modified um, and when it was sent. And then the banking is, is a really interesting one to touch on. Um, there's three ways that you can do your banking uh, within Twinfield. So you have your uh, manual way, so your more uh, manual data entry. You have your bank feeds, um, which is probably your most um, automated and quickest way of doing it. Uh, when you use the bank feed for anyone who's not familiar with them or never used them before, that bank feed is essentially going to pull in three pieces of, of information. It's going to have a date, whether it's a debit, a credit, uh, and a reference. If you're using the bank feed, then it's just really down to you to... Um, just to do some matching. So who does it need to be posted? Is it a customer? Is it a supplier? Um, what nominal code do you want it posted into? And then the more you use the, the bank feeds, they will obviously machine learn. So it will preset information the more you use them, or alternatively, uh, you can use the bank rules, which will save you a hell of a lot of time. So bank rules is if you've got any regular payments or receipts that are coming out of your account, whether it's a mortgage, your gas, your electric, just take the time to start to create them bank rules. And then once them transactions are fed in, essentially it's going to post them for you because you know what they are. So they're going to be the same every month or, you know, if it's a bill that fluctuates a little bit with gas and electric probably being the best example at the minute, which is tough for a lot of people, you might want to put a, and not a dead on amount, one that's uh, it's um, in between a certain amount. So anything above X or below uh, below Z. So the bank feeds are, are really good and, and use the uh, bank rules as well. It's that easy to connect to a new bank. Uh, just follow the process that we're going through here um, and then uh, choose your bank. Um, I haven't got a live bank feed connected at the moment. Um, I don't need reminding every day how much I'm spending at the minute. Um, so I haven't got one live, but um, the, the 
banks that people have chosen on demonstrations. I can't think of one that's not been on there. So um, if anyone wants to test the bank and put it in the chat panel, just, uh, just let me know. The other way that you can do banking, which is a obviously more digital world we're in and everyone's trying to automate and do things as quick as possible. Um, the other thing that you can do is import a bank statement. Um, from my experience, any imported bank statements generally couldn't have bank rules on. It was still a very manual process. With Twinfield, you can import a bank statement and still apply the bank rules on there, which is brilliant because, again, it's just avoid that manual. And not everybody is comfortable using the bank statements. You know, we have the data security, but, you know, if it's something that you're not comfortable using, you will prefer to essentially... Um, you know, import it yourself or do them manually, uh, it's no problem at all. So there's a, a bank statement I've just um, imported here. Um, I just need to uh, make sure it's in uh, my uh, demo import format and let's process that, process that. And I'll refresh the screen in a second and just get a quick drink while we're doing that. But again, just to highlight with, with the importing of a bank statement, just to have the facility and know that you can apply them bank rules is, is really important and everything's not just going to be manual. Um, just while I'm getting a drink, I'm just I'm sure I saw a hand pop up on the screen. Yeah, that was then. me. So is, um, yeah. I just to say that we, uh, I, think you've, I think you've hit the sweet spot in questions, Mike. Uh, we've now got a few questions in the, uh, in the, in the chat. So um, well, I'll, I'll just read through a few of them quickly because I think they relate to all around this. We've got one from an anonymous user which says, can you prepay over more than 12 months? Um, prepay over 12 months I will uh, double check that um, this is always a risk when you're asking questions if it's something you're not too sure on but Absolutely. rather than um, rather than give that uh, a guess I will um, I'll double check, check that with a couple of colleagues who've got a bit more experience so um, prepayments over 12 months um, we've also got another question from Nicola uh, who asked uh, in regards to the supplier ledger once you've matched an invoice payment is it possible to unallocate yes that is possible excellent so we've answered that one uh, can you, uh, I'll go back to that one in a second um, can you also prepay uh, so I think it's the same in all can you also prepay where the cost ends part way through the month such as for rent payments which may end halfway through the month. So you don't want a full month charge released in the final month. Currently have to manually calculate and post the required adjustment. So that's prepay halfway through the month. Yes. Um, if whoever has asked that question, if you could um, maybe pop your details in, in or just, just make sure you get my email address at the end. Um, that's something that I can really just pick up with um, a couple of the professional services team, just who've got a little bit more experience than me. Because again, I don't want to give half an answer on yeah, something. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it's possible, but I think it's better just to get a, a definite for you on that. Perfect. Is there any additional charges for bank feeds from Samantha? No, this is one thing that I wanted to touch on. That again, I can only use my experience, and I know with a couple of other solutions that I've come across and I've used. You know, you, you set things up, and the more you use it, you get charged for more things that you use. Um, Twinfield isn't like that. Everything is completely free. Any module is is just part of the package. Um, so the bank feeds are completely free. You know, you're not going to start using them and then your invoice is going to go up because you have started using them. There's literally no hidden costs. I don't think the price structures changed for, for so long as well, which I think from a transparency point of view and just for yourselves, you know, we're in, a, we're in a difficult day and age at the minute coming out of the pandemic. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty that... I think it's really important and compelling that you use an accounting system where, you know, you've got a bit of peace of mind where the product is going to stay at the same price for you. There's not going to be hidden costs and there's not going to be price increases potentially every, you know, six or 12 months, whenever them they might be. So no hidden costs for anything in the software, whether it's bank feeds. Um, and again, uh, once you're, you're using Twinfield, you, you're going to be on a set price moving forward. And Mike, I've got the um, I've got the email address for the person that asked that. Um, I've got one from uh, Vimal uh, who asked, "Can Mike run a VAT analysis report with two different with two different ways, like only purchase analysis?" Vim, uh, Vimal, I think that might be a little detailed for this webinar today. But what we'll do is I'll get Mike to reach out to you afterwards because I'm just conscious of time. Yeah, of course. Um, and we've got one as well. We have sales ledger in CC8 Central. Can we transfer information from CC8 Central into Twinfield? 
Um, again, I'm not going to I'm going to back that to an email or someone I can reach out to and um, find out a little bit more on that because Central isn't a product that I specifically deal with. Um, I know there is integration between the two, but um, that's probably something that's better picked up off online because again, I, I don't want to guess on something. Excellent. Okay, um, so that's that for those ones at the moment. Mike, if you want to carry on and we'll pick up any uh, any ones right at the end. Yeah, brilliant. So these, um, the banking statement, which was just running on there, um, once you've imported that, that bank statement, um, it's just for processing then. Um, and then I've got the uh, imported bank statement copy here, which will, once you've downloaded that, that will go into file manager, as I mentioned earlier. And if I just go back into the banking section, uh, and then go to my bank statements option. I should have uh, one in here. Uh, was it? Just give me one second. Bank statements on the orange tab. So I've got my uh, bank statement here. Any previous bank rules, I can apply them from here. But again, it's just that straightforward that when we're using the wizard icon just to run through it, you're just doing your matching. Where do you want things posted to? Which is the customer? and just work your way through it record by record. Um, so again, it, that you can apply the bank rules on uh, your imported statements. Um, just again, just going through a couple more navigation point of views. <coughs> Excuse me, if you go to the sales ledger, um, you've got your quoting system here, and you've got your invoicing. Very simple, straightforward processes to create both. Um, and you can create uh, your own invoice templates. So if I was going to new invoice, for example, um, it's going to ask me uh, your standard sort of information, uh, which customer is this in reference to, your invoice date. Uh, Twinfield doesn't have a specific stock system, um, but you can create uh, products and services that might apply to the business. Um, and then uh, you can apply them on an invoice, but it doesn't have a specific stock system where if you were selling, uh, let's say, animal feed like I've got here, the more you sell, them stock items are going to come down. It's called articles. Again, uh, Twinfield is, is a Dutch product. Um, so the terminology you just get familiar with is articles. So you can create any stock or services that you do. It's just not a, uh, a stock system on here. Um, you've got pay and collect on here, accounts receivable, which I mentioned earlier about more of a sort of debt chase side. Um, your purchase ledger. Again, this is probably more, uh, as I touched on with the prepayment, is anyone who's maybe used Sage 50, uh, more of like a, a batch entry side. So you can do multiple lines on the same page. Um, and then you've got your banking area, which we've touched on. Uh, we've touched on your VAT. Uh, we've got a fixed asset register as well. Fixed assets is one that I don't think you find too much in cloud systems, and unless anyone um, can can correct me on that, it, it doesn't come up too often. Um, fixed assets, not everybody is going to use, um, but the fixed asset register uh, as part of a depreciation point of view. Um, I've got a purchase invoice that I created earlier, um, so uh, for this fridge freezer item, so this is to be uh, processed. Um, fixed assets. When I was thinking about doing this demonstration, I thought, how much can I actually cover in this time? Um, and fixed assets is one that I'd probably like to go into in a bit more detail in another session. So if anyone is really interested in that side, um, please feel free to let me know and reach out and we could touch into it in a bit more detail. But from an asset point of view, um, you can actually show your depreciation by percent or time. And you can see here from, from an article that I've created how easy it is to see that depreciation go down over the set period that, that I've put it to. Um, again, I'll probably have to go into that in a bit more detail offline on an individual basis or, or in the next session. Um, and then the next thing we've got is financial professionals, which is a true sort of accounting area of the software. So you've got your transactions where you would do your finalizing and your uh, provisionals if anything needs to be rejected. You've got your budget, your year-end stuff, currency re-evaluation. You can do any of your matching. And then underneath that, we've got the report section. Uh, so there's 52 reports, I think it is out the box. Um, you can view them all by category or if you want to view all reports. Um, when I said about manipulating data, 
you know you can create your own report off the back of any of these that are already in the system if there's any reports that, that customers use that aren't anything to do with like your extended tb your age debtors your age creditors the professional services team that we have can look at creating reports with you as well which again is just a little bit of peace of mind that if something that isn't out of the box that you're currently using we can try and replicate it for you or if it's a report that you you think of which is is just away from your standard um, and then your sort of last area to get familiar with is the settings so organization settings is all about your organization you've got your company settings which is about the companies that you're doing work on behalf of and then your access settings is all about the individual users. And again, it's up to 70 uh, user roles that you have, which is really important on a day-to-day -day basis that you get the right user with the right role, which will then eliminate any mistakes moving forward. Um, so I think from a time point of view, we're on sort of 10 to 12 now. So um, I think it's probably best that we uh, go back to um, the presentation. Um, and there's a case study um, that I just wanted to put in here and hopefully, you know, customer, anyone who's on this call now will will join us on, on the next one because I, I don't, there'll be certain things that will be the same, but I'm going to try and add a couple of things in there, whether it's fixed assets, projects, you know, more on the budget side. There will be new stuff in there, but we will recap stuff that we've already done. The next case study. This is the first presentation that I've done like this with Walters Clue, and I think the next one we're going to get a live case study if possible and get a customer talking about their experience. It wasn't possible on this one, so I reached out to a customer that I had a, a big hand in onboarding. Um, and I think it's just really important to do a case study for someone who I've had involvement with because it's just a bit more authentic. So a company that, that I had a lot of involvement with was a company called Centralist Group, who is a global corporate sourcing, uh, outsourcing provider um, with the UK entity focusing on alternative asset managers and the renewable sector. Uh, so the, the three uh, members of staff that I was dealing with there was uh, Adam, Amy and Sean. So they came on board with Centralist uh, in 2022, uh, January. Um, and that was with the aim of growing the UK business um, and hence they required a more robust accounting system to allow them to uh, prepare multi-currency consolidated uh, management accounts for the clients. That's why I really went into the uh, report inside straight away from a group uh, point of view, but the, the currency element in Twinfield is fantastic. That's been a really uh, compelling reason for a lot of customers that I've spoke to as well. Um, so they looked at uh, various software uh, providers um, but what set Twinfield apart was the consolidation element so being able to post IC transactions across both entities and the ability to run consolidated reports so as well as the multi-currency element for example um, being able to post in base currency as well as the separate reporting currency you can then run them reports uh, side by side which was just a really compelling uh, argument for them. I asked for a little bit of feedback from Sean, um, and these are, are his words. I've not played on them. So the process of dealing with Walter's Clue was extremely easy. We've had demos of the software, which we found very helpful. Lee and Mike, who have been great at responding to all our queries, and Colin, who provided our on-site training, was brilliant too. We've also purchased CCH Accounts Production System, and it feels like we're building a long-term partnership with Walters Kluwer rather than just buying a piece of software off the shelf. Um, and to be honest, I, I, I think you know, always giving my opinion on something is is uh, is the best way, and I think that's a really good way to to nearly wrap things up. Is is the long-term partnership, um, Twinfield and Walters Kluwer in general? It's not about volume having as many customers as possible signing up we need to sign up more 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 you know twinfield might not be for everybody but for the people who use it they will use it for a long time and um, because it's again it's about building that relationship building that partnership and making sure the software is right for you from the start and not to sound too cheesy i suppose setting you up for success from the start so i think that was probably um, one of the best comments that um, that sean give us um so again, I suppose from a wrapping up point of view, um, unless uh, there's any more sort of questions in the chat panel, Phil, is there oh, anything Mike, that I've missed? Before, before you go to that, um, Steph, can we just run the last poll, please?
Ah, sorry, yes, last poll. Yeah, most important part of the whole day. Um, there we go. Look, so I appreciate we've had a load of questions, probably more questions than we were expecting on, on, on this webinar. So um, what we will do, however, is we'll reach out to some of you and kind of give you a little bit more information and come back to you where you can. Um, however, if you'd like some more information about Twinfield, um, including answers to your questions, uh, please do uh, say yes in the chat. and Mike will reach out and, and, and kind of hopefully be able to answer some more of those direct questions. Today was only ever really about an overview and to kind of give you an idea of what the capabilities of Twinfield are. So absolutely, you know, we're happy to, to, to reach out, have a conversation. And even if this might not be something that's right for you right now, um, you know, it could be down the line, um, etc. But uh, so we've had, uh, we've had a few, there's still a few of you left, a few of you being shy. Um, so please do um, answer the poll that's up. Would you like us to contact you? And this isn't, by the way, this isn't going to be like a hard sales pitch from, from Mike, right? This is just going to be finding out if Twinfield is something that might work for you. It's something that, that, that could potentially be relevant. Um, we'll obviously send you a recording of all of the, um, I'll obviously send you a recording of all of the emails. Uh, sorry, of all the, the, uh, the, I'll start again, shall I? We'll send you an email of the recording. Um, and also we'll send an email out to everyone who's asked a question. Uh, so you can see, um, kind of get some answers and everything else. So that was a very waffly way of explaining that, Mike. I completely fell apart at the end there. Um, I was just so, so you know, just, uh, yeah. So look, I think everyone's almost voted now. Just say, look, thank you very much for attending. Um, if you haven't voted, please do vote on the way out uh, because we'd love to reach out and have a chat with you and find a little bit more. Um, otherwise, Mike's contact details are on the screen as well. So feel free to reach out to Mike if you change your mind or if you'd like some further information down the road as well. Yeah, please do. And just, just echoing what, what Phil said there, you know, it's, it's, um, Twinfield is a very robust product. There's a lot to this, this system and it's quite hard sometimes to, to do a demonstration which is going to tick everyone's boxes. So if anyone has not seen anything on here where they think, you know, that's not really a reason for us to use it, please feel free just to, to drop me an email and ask any questions because um, sure I can pick them up offline. Perfect. Look, thank you very much for attending today. It's been great to meet you all and great to kind of talk you through uh, Twinfield. And, and as Mike said, it's something we don't do a lot of shouting about uh, in reality, but, but something we probably should because, you know, yeah. it is a good product. Um, it's nice to see you uh, Pretty over half of you kind of want a bit more information so uh, Mike will be reaching out to do that have a great afternoon everyone thank you very much for your time and uh, we look forward to speaking to you in the future thank you thanks Mike thanks Steph thanks everyone have a great week and uh, thanks for joining me again cheers thanks bye bye